Module 3 is a little bit easier. All you have to do is follow along in your hymnal. The whole point of this module is to kind of introduce you to a set of capabilities. We're not doing a lab. I just want you to see what's there so that if you ever need this, you know where it exists. And so what we're going to talk about is creating graphical scripts using Windows Forms, which is an element of the .NET framework, and Primal Forms, which is a tool that lets you sort of shortcut the process of building these dialog boxes. Now, given that I've been standing up here for a day and a half preaching the command line, you might ask yourself why you would want to use a command line to make a script that produces a GUI. Why might you? What are, what are some good reasons? Maybe somebody else is going to be typing input. What else? I mean, what are some specific situations you think you might want to have a PowerShell script surface a dialog box? It's really complicated. Needs a lot of information. A lot of if it's complicated, it needs to collect a lot of information. Maybe it's going out to end users, and you don't want them having to type commands in PowerShell. You can have error checking to make sure it was input correctly. You do some data validation on your input. So a, a GUI can often make a lot of those tasks easier for a less experienced user. Can constrain them a little more. You know, maybe in maybe in, in way of, of data validation you're offering them a drop-down box of acceptable values instead of just letting them free type a parameter value. So you can kind of constrain things a little. PowerShell is built on .NET. It is written in the .NET framework. It's written in C Sharp. The .NET framework has an entire subset of itself that is designed to build GUI apps. Those capabilities are completely accessible from within PowerShell. There's two ways to go about doing it. One is to sit down and laboriously hand construct the code necessary to create a dialog box, set the border style, set the size, set the title, create a button, set the size, set the title. Or you can get a utility that lets you sort of drag and drop all those bits together graphically, and then it spits out the PowerShell code needed to make your script. That's what Primal Forms is. There's a free edition of the tool. It's called Primal Forms Community Edition. There's also a commercial version. And Sapien ships it with several of their, their product bundles. So they have a, a Primal Script Universal and a Primal Script Studio that both include Primal Forms. Have you ever seen a developer creating a dialog box in Visual Studio? Anybody? Right? So you, you drag the little button from the toolbox, and you resize it with the mouse, and you click the properties box to change the title of it or whatever else. Primal Forms does that, and when you're finished, you push a button, and it spews out a script that will replicate that dialog box. So what you're going to do, though, is get into something called um, uh, object and event-oriented programming, which sounds scary, but it isn't. All those, those bits of a graphical user interface, a checkbox, a button, the window itself, what other types of, of GUI elements would you use? Drop-down list, I said that. Um, grid. Maybe a grid display, yeah, if you want to display a table of information. Um, list boxes, radio buttons, right, all those sorts of elements. Those are all objects, which means they have properties, just like everything else we've been playing with in PowerShell. Most importantly, though, they have events. So when you drag your mouse pointer across a dialog box in Windows, let's say it's a control panel applet, you're firing off hundreds and hundreds of events. Every time you move the mouse over something, like you move the mouse over a button, Windows tells that button, you move the mouse over here, he's touching you, he's touching you, he's touching you. And the button, the person who programmed that button, can write commands that run in response to that event. So with regard to a button, what's the one event you really care about? What does someone do to a button that you might be interested in? They click it. What do they do to a checkbox? Yeah, it turns out that most of the things you're usually really interested in involve click. Everything else is just the mouse flying around the screen. You know, if you want things to like glow and change color because someone moved the mouse over them, then there's an event for that as well. But clicking is what we normally care about. So within Primal Forms, you can click a button and say, I would like to tell you what commands to run when someone clicks you. And so a little editor opens up, like the ISE, 
and you type the commands that you want to run in response to that button clicking. And when you spew out the final script, all that is in there and it all happens and it all works together. Uh, within there, when you're, you're within that, that sort of set of commands that runs in response to the button clicking, you can refer to other controls by their name. So when you create a control like a checkbox, you give it a name, and that name shows up in your little primal form script. And you can say, when he clicks this button, I want this other button to become disabled. Or if he clicks this checkbox, I want to make this list box suddenly visible. So you can create sort of a dynamic dialog box that way. Um, there's a quick little walkthrough in here. Um, there's a slide labeled Create the GUI. Trick one when you're using this tool is to create meaningful names for these bits that you were putting onto the dialog box. So if I've created a big text area where I'm going to put results, name it results, just to help make it easier to keep track of the thing when you're trying to refer to it. You can see here on the next one, add commands to events, that I've right-clicked an OK button. I've selected the edit default event menu item. And then I'm just putting in the PowerShell commands that I would run when someone clicks that button. So it's kind of a vaguely wizardish type of thing. On the event scripts slide, you can see that I'm referring to a, a control by its name. So dollar sign and then the name that I gave the control. And then I'm changing the properties of the control. So here I'm taking that dollar sign results. That's the results text area you saw me create two slides ago. And I'm just changing its text property to say, running service pack, blah, 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 blah. To test it from within Primal Forms, you just click the Run button. You can see that my little dialog box that I programmed, Get Service Pack Version, has popped up. I've typed a computer name, I've clicked OK, and it tells me that it's running Service Pack 0. Once you're finished, you export the whole thing out to a file. And you're done. That's it. It's all over. You've created a script. Now another option, and somebody asked about this before we really started class on the first day, is to package it. Packaging takes a PowerShell script, turns it into an executable, an exe file, puts an icon onto it, lets you wrap alternate credentials around it if you want it to run under alternate credentials, and you can distribute that as a semi-standalone thing. It still needs PowerShell on the target machine in order to run, but all the user has to do is double click it, and they don't have to know it's a PowerShell script. It's all mysterious and magic and black boxy. And it can run under alternate credentials. And you can have, <coughs> have other little data files that go along with it if you need to. You're not going to be building the next version of Microsoft Word this way. So I know that's what everybody was hoping for. Um, you're pretty much going to be limiting yourself to a single dialog box application or script that is has some short utility purpose. Uh, if you need to write a big multi-dialog box Windows application, you need to go get yourself a copy of Visual Studio and a developer or two. That's not what PowerShell is for. This is just sort of to wrap a simple, simple, simple graphical user interface on top of a few PowerShell commands. That's kind of its limitation. Don't forget, too, that, that PowerShell version 2 has outgrid view. So, I mean, you can use that. That's a GUI element, too. That's a way of displaying information in a table. So there's, there's other ways that you can get to certain types of GUIs. But I'm not going to make you run through the lab on that one. 